Welcome to Microbiology Shorts. These are short videos on microbiology topics. My name is Rebecca Payne. Today we're talking about bacterial growth and the concept of a generation and generation time. So when we talk about microbial growth, um, if you're a bacteriologist and working with bacteria, we're generally referring to an increase in the number of cells and not just an increase in cell size because of course most bacterial cells they have a set shape and size and they don't really change that shape or size over their lifetime each species is individual so we're not talking about for example like a eukaryotic organism a multicellular organism getting bigger growth means going from being a small individual a baby to being an ad adult a large person so for bacteriologists bacterial growth or microbial growth is number of cells. And this is also true in a sense for fungi because we, we can say for yeast which are single cells the increase uh, microbial growth is an increase in the number of yeast cells and not an increase in yeast size per se but but yeast have a budding type of growth frequently and so that isn't completely accurate um, because buds do start out as small and then grow bigger so this is a generalization, of course, an increase in number of cells and not increase in cell size, but it's definitely true for bacteria. If you take a single bacteria and you grow it under completely optimal conditions for a little over a day, 27 hours, the resulting amount of bacteria can cover the surface of the earth with six feet of cells. So I guess we ought to be glad that they don't grow at optimal rate. Uh, because otherwise we'd all be swamped. The, the earth would, would collapse under the weight of the bacteria at that point. So bacterial reproduction is when you get an offspring produced from a parent. Um, this can also be true for fungi, it can also be true for algae, it can also be true for multicellular organisms. So reproduction is a little more universal definition than microbial growth is in the sense of bacteriology. For most microbes, reproduction involves a process of making an identical copy of the original cell. And if you're interested in that process for bacteria, you can go um, look up the microbial short on binary fission, because that's how it happens for, my, um, for bacteria. One cell would create two cells. When we're talking about bacteria, we refer to the replication process from a single cell to more than one cell, to two cells as a generation. So it's a single cycle of binary fission from start to finish. We call the original cell the parent cell and the two resulting cells daughter cells. So if you started with a single bacterial cell and you went through one generation, you'd wind up with two daughter cells from the original single parent cell. If you started then with the two daughter cells from that first cycle of binary fission, and then you did another cycle of binary fission with those two, you'd wind up with four cells at the end. Um, so there's a, a definite increase in the number of cells over the number of generations. If you start with one cell and go to two, that's a single generation. If you start with two cells and go to four cells, that's a single generation. And you can start with any number of cells, really. You could start with 101 cells. If you went completely one generation, that would be 202 cells. If you started with 1,000 cells, it would be 2,000 cells for a single generation. So it doesn't matter the initial starting number of cells, it's just the time to complete that entire cycle of binary fission. The actual amount of time that, it, that is required for an individual cell to divide, or if we're, if we're talking about a population of bacteria, like a whole group of bacteria in a, in a, uh, petri on a petri dish or in a test tube, um, we can say that the time it takes for that entire group of bacteria to go through one single cycle of binary fission, we call that its generation time, or its doubling time, essentially. Um, this is different for every different species. On the bottom of the slide I show you, E. coli generation time is 17 minutes. Bacillus subtilis time, generation time is 35 minutes. Some of the mycobacteria can take in the hours, and maybe even a day range of time to go through one doubling cycle. So they would be fairly slow growers in the microbial kingdom. And um, E. coli would be fairly fast in the microbial world.
In your textbook is a table that um, can help you learn how to quickly calculate some fairly large numbers. Um, if you want to calculate one generation time and you're starting with one bacteria, well that's a fairly th easy thing to do in your head, right? But if you want to calculate 15 generations or 20 generations or 40 generations, even if you start with one cell, the resulting numbers are going to be overwhelming. Shown here in the left in this table are generation numbers. So if there are no generations, if you go through zero generations, you're going to essentially have one cell to start with, that original parent cell. If you take that original parent cell and you go through five generations, you're going to wind up with 32 cells at the end of that. If you go through 16 generations, you're going to wind up with 65,536 cells at the end of those 16 generations. If you go 20 generations, you're going to end up with well over a million individual cells. Calculating this number of generations, even with just a starting number of cells of one, is a difficult thing to do, so we can use our calculator, a scientific calculator um, that has this key down here. Whoops, can I get a... there we go. It has a y to the x key. Uh, if you have a y to the x key on your calculator, you can do these calculations very easy. And the way you do it is to follow the instructions here. You're going to enter the number 2 on your calculator, press this, y to the x, then enter the number of generations. So 5 here in this example represents 5 generations. If you wanted to go 20 generations, you'd enter 20, etc. And then press equals or enter. And the calculator should show the number 32. So you can test your calculator um, with this, this formula down here and make sure it gives you the correct number so you know you're doing the keystroke sequence correctly. Some calculators, I have to warn you, don't function exactly like this. So you may have to look on the cheat sheet or the guide that comes with your calculator to see how to properly enter the keystrokes to get this key to work to give you the expected number up here. Another number that's really useful when calculating generations and generation time is um, a log 10 of the number of cells, mostly because these individual number of cells get mighty large, mighty fast. So 20th generations is a million, but the 21st generation would double this, it'd be 2 million. A 22nd generation would double that again to 4 million. When you start to get up in those kind of numbers, these numbers are are impossible to plot on a graph, right? If you start with one number and then 32 and then a thousand, but then you have to go to two or four or ten or fifteen or twenty-five million, trying to plot that on a graph is almost impossible. So if we convert these number of cells to a log ten of the number of cells, we can plot them on a graph much, much easier. The keystrokes for that are down to, to understand that are down here at the bottom. So to get these log ten number of cells, we're going to use the log key on your calculator. First you enter the starting number of cells, for example 32, then you press the log key, whoops, and then the calculator is going to show, rounded off, that the log 10 of 32 is 1.51. So you can test your calculator out with these calculations. The number of the generation time, to calculate the generation time, you have to use two different formulas. And generally you calculate the number of generations, with the first formula and the generation time with the second formula. You're going to take the log of the ending number of cells, subtract the log of the beginning number of cells, and that number divide by 0 .301 to get a number of generations. And then the generation time, you're going to take 60 minutes times one hour, so essentially this is what this doesn't show you that there's 60 minutes in one hour, so it's 60 minutes per hour times one hour, which means hours cancel out, um, and then you have that over the number of generations, which gives you a number of minutes per generation at the end. We'll do a lot of these calculations in class, and you can practice this on your own time with just about any starting number of cells and ending number of cells to get an ex estimated. All right, so this has been another microbiology short about generations and generation time. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Come back and listen to another one later. Have a great day.